Hi and welcome. Today we will be talking about methods of presentation of data. As we all know, data when collected is usually in its raw form and the information in the data is difficult to understand. Thus, the data needs to be summarized, processed and analyzed for it to be useful. Now, even when you have summarized, analyzed your data, for it to be really useful for anyone, this data will need to be presented, right? There are three broad ways in which data can be presented for people to understand. The first way is in textual format, something in which we call prose. All right. The second way is using a tabular format in form of tables, right? Arrangement in rows and columns. And then the third way is using a graphical format, which is gaining popularity nowadays. Now, the text format is actually useful when you want to explain findings of a study or the results of a study. And it's also useful sometimes when you want to explain trends, as you'll see in our examples that will be given. For the tables, tables are just simple tools that are used to um, represent individual um, information. And it is important because you can represent both quantitative and qualitative data using a table. And tables are used when you want individual values to be compared to one another. For graphs, graphs are usually used just to simplify complex information that ordinarily if you are presented in a table might be difficult for people to understand. So you use a graph to bring out that important information in such a way that anybody seeing it can easily understand. So graphs uses images to try to portray the meaning of the information that you have in the data. Um, graphs are also helpful in facilitating um, comparison. Now, it is worthy to note here that for whichever presentation type that you choose, it depends on the type of data that you have. So different data types are best presented using different presentation types. Okay, so it's very, very important to note this, that the method of data presentation that you use will depend on the type of data and the amount of data that you have. And you see that when we go into our examples. So let's talk about text presentation of um, data. Now, with text presentation of data, data is fundamentally presented in form of um, paragraphs or sentences. Now, um, when the text is written, it is used to provide interpretation um, of findings, maybe of a study that has been done, and you've done the analysis or sometimes you just want to highlight a certain aspect of your data that you have in your results so that's when text becomes very very important so an example of text presentation is when we say the number of covid cases increased from 40 in 2020 to 67 in 2022 all right so um, just know that when we use text presentation uh, so it's the main method that is used when you have already done data analysis and you want to explain your results right or it is also used sometimes to describe trends in data over time just like our example that we gave here when we said 2020 to 2022 right so and it's actually also frequently used to provide context to the data by describing some important aspects of the data that's how good text data presentation is but Presenting data in form of a text has a strong limitation because you only use this when your data contains just one or two numbers like in our example that we have here. Please do not use text for presenting large amount of data because it's now going to become very difficult to read and comprehend. So you only use it when your data contains only one or two numbers. Now, if more data to be presented and like some other long information regarding data trends are to be conveyed then a table or graph will be um, more um, appropriate right by nature data takes longer to read when presented as text and when the main text includes a long list of information then it becomes difficult to present so if this example that we had were to be presented also in a graph then it would be like a waste of space you know because um, why would you want to present just two numbers or three numbers in um, a table or a graph right so because this will occupy unnecessarily large space without even giving any extra value or giving any better understanding of um, the data so that's that for text representing data in form of text this is by putting the data in like a sentence and um, the text use is used to provide interpretation or emphasize um, some 
particular aspect of the analysis that you've done and only use this place when your data contains one or two numbers. Next, we'll go to um, tabular presentation of data. That's when data is presented in form of tables. So it's interesting to note that tables have been used for quite some time and a table is just a systematic organization of data in form of rows and columns. All right. And like I was saying earlier, it's interesting to note that tables containing information have been used for um, nearly almost 2000 years now. Right. And anybody with a decent level of um, literacy can quite easily understand the information presented presented in a tabular format all right tables are quite awesome because um, they can present both quantitative and qualitative information and you can do this at the same time so you can have a single table that presents age gender race income like some of us that are used to presenting um, data um, for social demographic characteristics you can see different data types are presented in one single social demographic um, table all right now tables have some strengths one of the main strengths of a uh, table is that uh, tables can actually uh, accurately present information that cannot be presented even with any other with, with a graph for example right so imagine you have uh, data you want to present one one seven two point three nine eight right so a number such as this can be accurately expressed in a table but how convenient will this be when you put this in a graph it doesn't it becomes quite difficult you, uh, not only writing 172 but where do you even how do you represent 0.398 and you know and the rest are so there are different kinds of data that cannot be presented in a graphical format and the tab tabular format is just the best way of presenting it because it gives you you can put the accurate the exact amount of information that you want to put um, there meanwhile what you put in the graph might be an approximate amount just to <coughs> show a picture so another strength of a table is a table can house different units um, in, uh, in a single table so you can present different units um, together so for example you can have blood glucose level respiratory rate bmi hp level all of them in one single table this is quite difficult to do in in a chart so even despite all these very strong um, strengths that a table has table has some shortfalls okay one of the shortfalls of the table is that um, interpretation of the information takes a little longer in tables than in graphs and because um, in tables you know you can you have the chance to put different information and if one is not careful the table will contain so much data in different formats that it will take some considerable amount of time for you to be able to interpret and understand what the table is talking about all right so that's a main weakness of uh, table interpretation takes some time all right and then another shortfall is that um, tables are not really appropriate for studying data trends because um, it's not easy to um, trace uh, a change in uh, maybe a figure or something by just simply looking at the figures, right? A graph will do a very good job um, in easily showing you that complex information in a very, very simple way. You can see those changes visually. Now, also, since all the data that are put in a table are of equal importance, then it's usually not easy to identify and selectively choose the actual information that is required. And that's what brings us to the concept of a graph because a graph actually uses images to pinpoint and bring out the very important information so you might have a very complex information but the graph will help you to bring that out in form of an image that visually you just see and it's appealing and you understand a lay person can just see the graph or the plot or the map and understand exactly what is going on now i have an amazing video on the different parts of a table and the different types of tables now you can check that up in the link that is popping up on the screen here or in the description of um, the video but let's continue um, finally we're going to be talking about graphical presentation of data and this is when your data that you have analyzed you want to now present it in form of a chart right so and when we talk about graphical data representation whereas tables can be used for presenting all the information that you have from your analysis graphs just help you to simplify this um, information in a very simple way all right so a graph is a representation of data using images in form of charts maps graphs plots just name it um as long as in form of an image uh, something that you can see visually that's what we call a graph all right so the graphs have um, a, a particular strength all right and the major strength is that it helps to simplify complex information 
right? So don't go and be drawing a graph and the graph is just so difficult to understand. That's not a graph, please. The information you have is so difficult to understand that you are now putting it in a graph and it's confusing people, then that's not a graph. That's a very bad graph. Put that information in the table. So a graph actually helps to simplify very complex information by bringing out some salient points there and exposing it in form of an image and everybody can see and people will be happy to understand. A graph does this by using these images to emphasize some data patterns or trends. And this is very, very useful in summarizing or explaining or exploring or even showing, you know, the strength that you have in um, data. Okay. So uh, like I said, it's very, very good to display pattern and trends because you can see this um, uh, visually. Okay. So and, and while tables are very effective in presenting large amounts of data, um, graphs can be used in place of tables to just present small sets of data, but in a way that is appealing and people can really understand that information that you want to portray. So anytime in which you want to represent data in form of a, a graph, now the graph format that is best suited for the information that you have must be chosen, right? And just like I said earlier, if you're choosing a graph, the kind of graph that you will choose must be the graph type that is appropriate for the data type that you have. All right. So there are some weaknesses with uh, the graph. One of the weaknesses with the graph is that you cannot use it to present all the data that you have like in form of a table you have to just pick and choose the kind of data that you want to show and the kind of information that you want to uh, bring out right another weakness of the graph is that you cannot use it to represent different kinds of data at the same time like different units um, at the same time uh, that, that will become make it very very difficult to understand and uh, and quite confusing all right so there are different types of charts that are being used the ones that are frequently being used so one point i want us to note here is that the type of graph that you use will depend on the data type that you have so graphical representation depends on the type of data that you have now here we'll be talking about frequently used graph types and the types of data that are appropriate for the graph format or the graph format that is appropriate for the type of data that you have with examples okay so first off is the pie chart now with the pie chart this is one of the most popular and because you can see the slices of the pie you know and these slices denote like different categories so it's simple to note and say here that pie chart is actually used for categorical um, data all right so an example here is like educational status that has primary secondary and tertiary so each of those categories primary let's say the green one is primary the yellow one is secondary and then the third one is um, tertiary okay so anytime you have categorical data maybe the first thing you can think of is um, pie chart but know that pie chart also has some of its um, limitations okay please don't use pie chart for numerical data don't if, if you don't know anything in the graphical representation of data don't even make the mistake of saying pie chart is for numerical data all right so if you want to learn more about pie charts and how to construct one then check out the link that is popping up um, above on the right side of the screen or check um, the video description below so next off is the bar chart bar chart is also very popular and is also used for categorical data just like the pie chart you can see that the bars are not joined they are separate all right so and that means that each bar is a separate category so an example here could be like a socioeconomic status that has different categories high middle low and the rest like that so each bar will represent one category so anytime you have categorical data either you think of a bar chart or or you think of a pie chart all right it's as simple as that okay so um check out also the video description uh, for a full video on the different types of bar charts because we have different types of bar charts that you can um, draw and to learn how to draw them okay just remember that bar charts and pie charts are used only for categorical data now for the next example i'm sure you guessed what we're going to bring up for the next example that's a histogram right so uh a histogram this is a histogram and you can see the difference between the histogram and the bar chart is that all the bars are actually touching each other uh, that's to show you that these things are not like separate categories they're like in a continuum so a histogram is used for continuous variables or is used for numeric data so a histogram is used to show the distribution of uh, numeric data okay so this is a histogram it's for numeric data uh, example is like age or height and this uh, diagram you are seeing here of the histogram is just showing us the age distribution of um, respondents in a survey all right so we've got pie chart bar chart and histogram all right awesome the next one we'll be talking about now on our list is the box plot all right so with the box plot the box plot is actually also used for numeric data right but this depends on what type of variable you are dealing with right or what type of 
um, relationship or hypothesis you are trying to prove. So if you're just trying to look at the distribution of a single variable, then a box plot is just used for numeric variables. Now, but if you are talking about two variables, right? Do you want to see the relationship between two variables? For a box plot, one variable is a numeric variable and the other variable is a categorical variable right so what we're seeing in the box plot is that it is actually showing the different like what we're seeing in this box plot now we have three different categories you can see with the different colors and these three categories are three categories of a second variable which is the categorical variable so let's give an example here say hemoglobin level is the numeric variable and education level is categorical variable so the first one you're seeing here is for primary this is for secondary and this is for tertiary and these are their hemoglobin levels on this side and this is the categorical variable on this side all right so when we talk about box plots is primarily used for numeric data when you're dealing with one variable but when you talk about the relationship between two variables one variable is a numeric variable and we're looking at the distribution of that numeric variable within the different categories of a categorical variable is quite simple the next thing we'll be talking about is the scattered plot and the scatter plot is useful for checking the relationship between two numeric variables so when you hear of the scatter plot we're talking of two numeric variables uh, an example we can give here is hemoglobin level and uh, bmi and so you see one variable will take this axis and then the other variable will take the other axis and we'll see how it's plotted all right the last one we want to highlight here is called the line graph and it is useful for monitoring the changes of a numeric variable over time so it's used for numeric data so example is like the number of cases of neonatal tetanus from 1990 to um, 2022 all right so maybe it goes up then it goes down then it goes up again then it goes down then now it's on an upward trend this is 2022 here and then 1990 1990 here all right so it's, 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 a, it's called a line graph is used for numeric data and uh, it checks over time the way the data is distributed um, over time so we have pie chart bar chart used for categorical variables we've got the histogram used for numerical variable with numerical data we've got the box plot that is used for numeric data where you have only one variable and when you're talking of two variables you want to see the relationship between the two variables then one variable is um, numeric and the other variable is categorical when we talk about the scattered plot scattered plot is used for two numeric variables so the data that you have are two numeric data hp and bmi and the line graph is for numeric data this is data that is distributed over time alrighty so to wrap things up I want to ask you um, the following questions and please put your answers in the comment section below and please do not um, ignore this okay so what is the best the correct graphical method to use to represent the data below all right so please put your answers in the comment section the first is health workers that received covid 19 vaccines in three facilities the second is hemoglobin level of 10 children and then the third is exam scores of 10 abu dlc students you can see they passed very well right some got 69 66 71 all right very good i'd like to see your answers and that's all i have for you folks so in summary we have um we've talked about data presentation and we said it can be in three forms textual tabular and graphical um we've said that the textual data is presented in a sentence or a graph and the tabular one presents more accurate information and in most of the times it presents what cannot go into um, graphs for the graphical presentation we say it depends on the kind of data that you have and different graph types are used for different data types and we give several illustrations and examples now if you have gained value in this video then a sub to the channel will be most um, appreciated don't forget to give us a thumbs up and drop a comment uh, if you do this it will encourage me to continue to make more amazing content like this and watch out for our next video god willing uh, in our next video we will be discussing descriptive statistics see you in the next video but until then peace